What's up, lore masters? Per a community tab vote, we will be looking at what would have happened if the Dominion had won the Dominion War. For the purposes of this theory, I'll have three requirements to make it cohesive and interesting. First, the Founders would have found a cure for the Section 31 disease. This being relatively straightforward, the Founders being killed off would take this scenario in a drastically different place. One we can explore, but for now let's have them cured. The Alliance would fall at Operation Return, meaning the Romulans do not enter the war and thus do not lose as well. And lastly, it is a complete and total military victory for the Dominion, with a caveat we'll discuss later in the episode. With these in mind, let's just get into it. In 2374, Operation Return, the best chance for the Federation Alliance to retake the wormhole and secure the Alpha Quadrant, would fail. The USS Defiant would enter the wormhole, and the only thing to exit would be the Dominion forces from the Gamma Quadrant. Dominion propaganda would say the ship was destroyed during combat, though no evidence for this would ever be presented. With the failure of Operation Return, the Bajoran wormhole secure, the Dominion would take advantage of Earth being left vulnerable and launch a full-scale attack. We know that the fleet protecting Earth was left out of position, if not destroyed, and with Operation Return a failure, there wouldn't be an adequate defense. The Dominion would capture the Federation's capital. While this would almost be a foregone conclusion, it would take time for the Dominion fleet to arrive on Earth. Starfleet would evacuate as many as they could, as well as the civilian leadership. Starfleet, to my mind, would have two options. They could make a bitter fight of it, making every inch the Dominion took very costly, or they could have a scorched Earth policy, salvaging all the military and civilian tech they could and retreating. While we can't be sure, I believe Starfleet would leave a Scorched Earth policy, destroying the shipyards, Starbase 1, and Starfleet headquarters. Anything that could not be evacuated would be decimated. This has a few advantages to it, even if it seems cowardly. You reallocate forces you would definitely need to places they might serve a better purpose, and have a chance of launching a counterattack with forces you wouldn't have had if you had lost them during the battle. Starfleet would divide its forces to the other founding members' planets and attempt to set up a defensive perimeter. The next stage of events will have what I think are a logical course, and then I have a couple of ideas, a couple of other theories that may seem a bit stretched, so let's get into it. With the fall of Sector 001 to the Dominion forces, the civilian government would send out a plea for negotiations. To quote Quark though, at this point, peace would come at a high cost. Now the Dominion had the advantage, peace would no longer be at a premium like it would have at the beginning of the war. The Federation would ultimately fracture as planets seceded to form separate agreements with the Dominion, or made their own, I guess you could call them fiefdoms, to defend themselves. Ultimately, the peace that would be negotiated would be little more than an unconditional surrender. The peace treaty would have some provisios. I do believe that they would require the Dominion not taking their aggression out on civilian populations, just the civilian government, but that would be about it. They wouldn't have a lot to barter with. While these negotiations were going on, Starfleet would be working in the background. Here's an interesting thought. Starfleet ships were also made for exploration, to go where no one has gone before. While the Defiant and Akira class ships would most likely not fare well, we know that the Intrepid can be on the opposite side of the map and still be able to operate autonomously. So again, while the negotiations were occurring, Starfleet would quickly put a fleet together compromising long-range ships that could clear Federation space. Hell, even known space. Galaxy class, Intrepid class, Sovereign, anything that would be able to survive on its own. I do believe Section 31 would assist by providing things such as the Phase Cloak and possibly better defenses for the ships. An invitation for the Klingons to join as well, to leave and rebuild in order to come back and free both the Federation and the Klingon from the Dominion at a later time. So a small fleet of Starfleet civilian and, yes, even Klingon ships would depart the founding member planets, unlikely to ever return in their own generation. This fleet, and its true intention, would be wiped from every computer. Very few people would even know about it, and honestly would probably be killed by Section 31 before the Dominion took complete control. The official records would show that ships were dispatched to the outer realms of Federation territory to only be destroyed by Dominion and other forces. With Starfleet unable to hold the Dominion back, I believe the Romulans would also take advantage of the situation. We know that the Romulans were inclined to sit back and see who the obvious winner was. Vrenak even says it in the Pale Moonlight, that he would back the victor. So with that, I believe the Romulans would declare war on the Federation Alliance and begin invasion attacks. With unity broken, and a new front now opened up by the Romulans, what was left of the Federation would agree to surrender without conditions. The Dominion would quickly overwhelm the remaining resistance and fiefdoms, and that would be that for the United Federation of Planets. The Klingon Empire would stand alone and fight to the end. 
In a reverse of what we see at the invasion of Cardassia, the Klingons under General Martok would make the Dominion pay for every inch of space that they gained. In the next few months, the casualties would be high, but the Dominion would slowly overthrow the Klingon Empire and ultimately dominate it. The Treaty of Bajor, where the Federation Alliance would formally surrender and disband, would be little more than a show for any who would oppose the Dominion. By the end of 2475, we would see the Federation and Klingon Empire destroyed under that of the Dominion rule. The Romulan Star Empire would be the only major power left standing, and it was now surrounded on three sides. The Bereen would quickly sign peace agreements, perhaps even joining the Dominion. Ferenginar would agree to become a part of the Dominion, as long as their trade was able to stay. And as the next few months went on, smaller empires would most likely take subject status as well, being allowed to carry out their own operations, as long as they kept relatively low military levels and would do the Dominion's bidding. The only governments that I believe would make a true fight of it would be that of the Tholian Assembly, and the Zinkithi. Little more than border wars in comparison, though, both empires would quickly be overtaken and subjected, just like the Federation sectors that continued to resist were. The Dominion would now turn its eyes upon bringing order to its own borders. With the Federation destroyed, crime and pirates would rise, and a need to keep the peace would be very necessary. The Dominion would breed more and more Alpha Quadrant Jem'Hadar and begin bringing rule to the area. In the Gamma Quadrant, there is a lot of evidence that self-rule was something that was allowed for those who did not resist. With most of the Alpha Quadrant resisting, the Dominion would likely not allow this for a long, long time. The Federation and Klingon areas would be broke up into sectors or segments controlled by various Vorta. At this point, many believe that Earth would be destroyed or the populace eradicated. They generally quote the episode Sacrifice of Angels. Now. I believe that Weyoun would be overridden by the founders on this, for a few reasons. First, Weyoun's dialogue was just bad writing, and it was done specifically for continuity and for statistical probabilities, but also because I believe the founders are probably smarter than Weyoun in this. Earth's population would be under heavy military rule, but be allowed to persist, without their creature comforts, of course. Additionally, we would see large amounts of humans, Tellarites, and Vulcans disappear without a trace. There would be whispers as to why that the Dominion were taking people, but nothing would ever be confirmed. And then, after, let's say, a couple months or so, a deadly plague, very similar to the Blight, would hit Earth. This, to my mind, would be more effective than the eradication of a populace. I don't believe the Dominion would publicly address if they were doing anything to stop it. However, like the quickening, the virus would be highly contagious and spread easily from human to human, and children would be born with it. Ultimately, all support for the planet would be cut off, and any ability to get off-planet removed. The Dominion would caution the Alpha Quadrant against interacting with humans, as it appeared the disease could pass from them to other species. While this would never be conclusively proven, I could see most of the other races opting to shun humans at this point. And, like the Blight, you could not use other technologies around this virus. It would put people in extreme pain. With the human question settled, I think at probably about seven months after the defeat of the Federation Alliance, Jem'Hadar ships would be crewed with a new species, created by the gods, of course. Considered the lowest being in the Dominion hierarchy, they would have the ingenuity of humans, the mechanical and technical capabilities of a Tellarite, and the psychic abilities of a Vulcan. These new beings, or creatures, would serve as the mechanics of the Dominion machine. Effectively, they would have created their new Starfleet Corps of Engineers, but under the Dominion rule. During this time, an aggressive extermination policy would begin. The Klingons, most likely to put up the best fight, would begin to be killed at an accelerated rate. The Blight would be spread to them as well, and the Jem'Hadar would begin to hunt them down. Those subjugated or allied with the Klingon Empire, such as the Orions, would be granted subject status if they agreed to fight. In the Alpha Quadrant, to be a Klingon would be a very rare thing after the Dominion was done. One year after the fall of the Federation Alliance, the Dominion would turn to other affairs. With the humans and Klingons effectively removed from the universe, the Dominion would change its opinions regarding its former allies. I believe that the Cardassians would be allowed subject status, but ultimately would be no better than their Gamma Quadrant equivalents. They would be forced to demilitarize and would hold a special status in name only. The same would be granted to the Sona and the Breen, though I don't think that the Sona and the Breen would have as much a problem with it as the Cardassians would. During this time, a Cold War would finally be in full effect between the Dominion and the Romulan Star Empire. I recently did a community poll where I asked if the Romulan Star Empire would fight back or agree to be subjects. So I now say this because I know it's going to be somewhat controversial, which is surprising to me, but I firmly believe that the Romulan Star Empire would bluster, they would banter about, 
but ultimately would submit to the Dominion. I think that they would push for a higher subject status than most would get. They would want to be allowed to do their own affairs as long as they didn't counter the Dominion. They could have a small modicum of autonomy and would provide cloaking devices to the Dominion ships. Though, even after accepting this, in the background, the Dominion would slowly begin to find itself under more and more hardship. Suddenly, Ketracel White would be poisoned, ships randomly exploding, and Vorta being assassinated, though they never can figure out who, and far, far off, beyond the eyes of the Dominion, a fleet of Dederadex class ships would start to be constructed. Off the books, of course. I do believe that the Romulans would ultimately also ally with the Remans, gaining the Scimitar-type ship and probably making multiple of those along with the Dedera decks. And during all this time, the Romulans would just sit back, submit to the Dominion, and wait. The next few years would be chaotic, with the Dominion finding rebellions and quashing them as quick as they can. They would use a carrot and stick approach. Any rebellion would be met harshly, but those who were loyal subjects would find more and more of their rights returned to them and more autonomy. And for those who were obedient, who proved their loyalty, there would be promises of self-government. Promises that you could handle your own affairs, you could be just like our Gamma Quadrant subjects. Just kneel and kiss the ring. The next major impact would be the destruction of Romulus in 2387. The Dominion would most likely sit back and not offer any real assistance, and then with the destruction of Romulus by the supernova, Jem'Hadar's ships would probably give it about a week and then invade Romulan territory removing what military assets that existed at the time and the civilian government. Claiming it was in the best interest of the Star Empire, they would state that because of the upheaval of their subject, it is in the best interest of the Romulan Star Empire if they no longer existed as the Romulan Star Empire. The Romulans would find themselves now sectioned off, just like its other predecessors. They'd be no better than the United Federation of Planets or the Klingon Empire. This action would finally accomplish having all major powers broken in 2394, it would be roughly 20 years after the Dominion had won. There would be entire new generations, whether it's humans or others, that would have grown up under Dominion rule. They wouldn't know what it was like to be a part of the Federation, only to be a subject of the Dominion. It would be about this time, I believe, that the first real step against the Dominion would happen. A disenfranchised Cardassia fractured Romulan Star Empire with ships it was holding in secret. The Starfleet Klingon flotilla that left for parts unknown. And then finally, the return of the USS Voyager, now with enhanced technology that can defeat the Borg. And perhaps even a small fleet of ships of its own, all ready to come together with one sole purpose. Defeat the Dominion by cutting off the wormhole and destroying their hold in the Alpha Quadrant. But that'll have to wait for the next video. Give me your comments below, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.